If you think that Elon Musk's plan to colonize Mars is wild, what one NASA scientist has proposed for Venus is nothing short of extraordinary. While many believe that Mars is the ultimate destination for future human settlers, a new study shows that Venus may actually be a better alternative for our species to build a home away from home. Let's talk about this ambitious idea and what a colony on Venus would look like. The idea of making humans a multi-planetary species has gained traction among scientists and thinkers, driven by concerns about the numerous challenges facing Earth. Issues such as climate change, deforestation, overpopulation and the looming threat of nuclear war highlight the fragility of our existence on this planet. Establishing colonies on multiple planets is seen as a way to safeguard the long-term survival of our species. As it turns out, recent studies have shown that Venus may be a better candidate than Mars for this interplanetary colonization. Being the second planet from the Sun, Venus stands out as the hottest and brightest in our solar system. It's named after a Roman goddess linked with love and beauty, the only planet with a female name. Back in ancient times, People saw it as two different stars, one appearing in the evening and the other in the morning. Today, we know that Venus is a pretty brutal place. Spacecraft can't last long on its surface because of its scorching conditions. Compared to Earth, it is quite similar in size, mass, density and gravity. However, the two planets differ in various ways. Venus has a big iron core, a thick rocky mantle and a mostly basalt crust. What makes Venus truly extreme is its heat. It's not the closest planet to the Sun, but its thick atmosphere acts like a blanket, trapping heat and making it scorching hot. Temperatures can reach a blistering 880 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to melt lead. So, while Venus may be Earth's twin in some respects, it's far from a friendly neighbor for humans. Spacecraft that have landed on its surface survived only a few hours before being destroyed by the extreme heat. The planet's atmosphere is incredibly heavy, mainly made up of carbon dioxide, sulfuric acid clouds and tiny bits of water. The air pressure on Venus is 90 times stronger than Earth's, similar to the pressure of 3,300 feet underwater in the ocean. The planet is very dry because the sun's ultraviolet rays evaporated any water long ago, and its intense heat would instantly boil away any water that exists today. Most of the Venusian surface is flat with thousands of volcanoes, some still active. The planet also has unique features, like ring-shaped structures formed by hot material under its surface warping the land. Over the years, Venus has been visited by over 20 spacecraft from Earth, mainly by the United States, the Soviet Union and the European Space Agency. The first spacecraft to get close to Venus was NASA's Mariner 2 in 1962, which came within 21,600 miles of the planet. This marked the first time a planet was observed by a passing spacecraft. The Soviet Union's Venera 7 made history in 1970 by being the first spacecraft to land on another planet, specifically on Venus. Later, Venera 9 captured and sent back photographs of the Venusian surface. NASA's Magellan Orbiter played a crucial role by mapping 98% of the planet's surface and detailing features as small as 330 feet across. The Venus Express spacecraft spent eight years studying Venus up close, confirming the presence of lightning on the planet. In 2014, as its mission ended, it made a risky move, diving into the planet's outer atmosphere. Surprisingly, it survived and later moved to a higher orbit, but eventually ran out of fuel and burned up. Japan's Akatsuki mission 
launched in 2010, faced engine problems but managed to correct its course and observed significant gravity waves in Venus's atmosphere. In 2021, NASA announced two upcoming missions to Venus. Da Vinci Plus will study the planet's atmosphere in detail, while Veritas will map its surface using advanced radar technology. Scientists believe that Venus might have been habitable in its early years, with a shallow ocean, milder temperatures, and a thinner atmosphere resembling Earth's. Using climate models similar to those predicting Earth's climate change, researchers found that Venus could have supported life during its first two billion years. However, today's Venus is very different. It has a harsh environment characterized by high levels of carbon dioxide and temperatures that can go beyond 864 degrees Fahrenheit, making it inhospitable for life as we know it. Earth and Venus formed from similar materials, but Venus evolved differently due to its proximity to the Sun. Venus rotates much slower than Earth, with one day on Venus lasting 117 Earth days. Initially, scientists thought its slow rotation was because of its thick atmosphere, but new research challenges this idea. Using data from NASA's Magellan mission, scientists simulated ancient Venus with water in the lowlands, a thinner atmosphere and a dimmer, older sun. They found that ancient Venus likely had a drier landscape than Earth, limiting water evaporation. The slow rotation would have created rain and thick clouds, possibly cooling the surface and making it suitable for life. This hypothesis suggests that Venus might have supported life in the past. Hey spacers, before you start packing your bags to Venus, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon for more interesting ideas in the world of space exploration. And now, let's see what a future Venusian colony would look like. Despite Venus's harsh conditions, NASA is exploring a daring plan to make the planet habitable for humans. The idea, proposed by astrophysicist Alex Howe, involves building enormous porous rafts that would float above Venus's toxic atmosphere. These rafts, made of connected hollow sections, would cover the entire planet and create a habitable zone above. Machines would work to change the air above the rafts into a breathable mix, allowing people to live and work on top of them. While the plan is incredibly ambitious and would take centuries to complete, scientists believe it's technically possible. If successful, it could provide a unique opportunity to study Venus up close and unravel the mysteries of its transformation from an Earth-like planet to a hostile environment. The idea of creating cloud cities on Venus is driven more by the spirit of exploration than immediate scientific gains. While remote probes would be more practical for short-term research, Venus presents unique appeal as a potential new home for humans in space. Its near-Earth-like gravity, thick atmosphere offering better protection against cosmic rays and UV radiation compared to Mars, and shorter travel time from Earth makes it an intriguing option. The proposed approach involves sending solar-powered machines to Venus, which would extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert it into oxygen and carbon. The carbon would be used to construct lightweight tiles large enough to float, forming the basis for these floating cities. By linking these tiles together at an altitude of around 30 miles above the planet's harshest winds and heat, a habitable zone could be established. However, the challenge lies in the scale of the project. It would require an enormous number of these tiles, estimated at 72 trillion to cover Venus, and constant maintenance would be necessary to replace broken tiles and repair damage caused by wind shear and occasional asteroid impacts. Expanding on the concept, after creating the initial floating structure on Venus, the plan would involve adding layers to build a thick, hollow surface. Extra oxygen produced during carbon mining could be stored in the hollow ground, 
The first settlers would live in enclosed domes, overseeing the ongoing construction. However, a significant challenge would be the scarcity of water on Venus. To sustain cities, farms, and natural environments, an enormous volume of water, equivalent to a cube with sides 40 miles long, would be needed. This amounts to over quadrillion gallons of water. One proposed solution is to mine ice from Ceres, a dwarf planet located between Mars and Jupiter. An enormous elevator on Ceres' surface would lift the ice into space, where rockets would transport it to Venus. However, Ceres would eventually exhaust its minimal ice, leading scientists to consider Mars as a better candidate for colonization. Despite its appearance, Mars has underground water reserves, mainly in the form of ice near its poles, which could sustain human colonies on the red planet. So, spacers, what do we think? Should we continue to focus on going to Mars? Or could Venus be a better option for humans to thrive away from Earth? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.